if you power on the system without a micro SD card in the Turbo EverDrive Pro, you'll get an error screen. SD card not found. Let's go ahead and format an SD card. Here I'm using a micro SD Transcend Premium 300X 64GB SDXC UHS-I. I tested it in advance, so I know this one works fine with CD audio. The format options Windows gives by default are XFAT with 120 kilobyte allocation size, so that's what I'm using. You can give the disk a volume name if you'd like, but it won't affect the EverDrive operation. Make sure you choose quick format, otherwise you might sit around for quite a while. New to this version of the Turbo EverDrive is the ability to have the flashcard itself copy the necessary system files back onto the SD card. This can save you a little time if you don't want to go out to the internet and download the firmware files or set up the folder structure on your own and so on. Of course, this doesn't contain the CD-ROM BIOS or any game files. This is the method we'll use to set up the folder structure. Now, without copying anything to the card, let's insert it in the system and power it on. We'll see a message that's being set up. Once completed, it'll look blank, but if we take it out and place it in a computer, we'll see the EverDrive set up the folders for us. we'll see a newly created ED directory. Inside here is the folder structure needed for the EverDrive to work. You'll see BIOS, game data, syscore, sysdata, themes, and menu. We'll come back to these shortly. To copy games over, you just need to copy them over to the SD card. No extra software is necessary. Hue cards and turbo chips, the cartridges, can be placed in the root directory of the card or in a folder or subfolder. CD games, though, must have a separate folder per game. Of course, these can also be in subfolders if you'd prefer for organization. Now, let's go back to the ED Turbo BIOS folder. Here is where you'll need to place the PC Engine or TurboGrafx-16 CD BIOS file. This is not provided by Crix. Here I'm using the recommended Super CD-ROM System V3 file. Now let's work on updating our Turbo EverDrive Pro firmware. The latest version can be downloaded for free directly from Crix at Crix.com. Click on Downloads, Turbo EverDrive, Pro Series, Firmware, and find the version you want. At the time of this video, the latest firmware is 1.03 and there is a beta 1.04 beta 2. I'll demonstrate updating to 1.03. For the purpose of this video, I have all the files needed in a folder on the desktop. I previously downloaded 1.03, but we'll copy this newly downloaded one into the folder and overwrite it. Place the firmware file somewhere onto the SD card. I'm placing it in the root directory just so it's easier to find. Eject the card and return it to the EverDrive. Power on the console, select the file, and run the update. After several seconds, the firmware will be flashed, both to the Turbo EverDrive itself and the SD card. And that's it.
One of the highly anticipated features with the Pro is safe state support. However, this feature only works on standard cartridges. Save states are not supported with Super Graphics and CD-ROM games. Press select anywhere in the menu, choose options, and choose in-game combo at the bottom. Here you can set up the button combinations to save to the current save slot, load from the current slot, or pull up the in-game menu. Note that some games might not support the in-game menu button combination, in which case you'll have to press the actual physical button on the EverDrive itself. Let's see how they can be used in Bonk's Adventure. Obviously, this is the beginning of the game, so you probably wouldn't need to save here. If I press right and run, or start, I create a save state. If I press left and run, it'll load it. And if I press down and run, it pulls up the in-game menu. You can choose to save and load from this menu as well. At the bottom of the menu, the current save state slot is displayed. By default, you'll be on slot 0, but you can change the current slot by pressing left or right. Here's a place in stage 3 where you might want to practice a clip. But here's a better use, a boss fight. Here you'll see me fight the boss three different times, resetting with a save state and getting progressively quicker with each attempt. Now let's try Kato-chan and Kinchan. In this game, the in-game button combinations don't work, and the physical menu button on the EverDrive itself must be pressed to pull up the menu. I don't know why you'd want to safe stay at this particular spot. Maybe to demonstrate some of the game's charm? Of course, with this feature you might create quite a few saves. These can be managed directly on the Pro. Pull up the menu, press select and choose System Folder. Inside of Game Data, the EverDrive will create a folder for each game with save states or cheats based on the ROM file name. The CD backup data will go here as well. The save states are listed here. There are 100 slots available, and the last two seem to be randomly used when saving and loading, so maybe it's more like 98 or so slots. If you want to remove one, select it with button 1, press delete, and choose yes. And if you're not sure which slot is which, you can choose preview to get a screenshot of the save state. If you prefer to manage the data on a computer, you can do that as well. 
Open up the ED Data game folder and you'll find the folders there. You can also choose to rename or reorder the slots or duplicate them if you need. The last feature we'll look at is cheat codes. The Turbo Effort Drive Pro supports the format used by Magic Engine, a well-known PC Engine software emulator. To find some compatible codes, search online for something like Magic Engine Cheat Codes. One of the first results that should come up is the Magic Engine Cheat Forum. Here you'll see several pages full of codes. There are a lot of threads to look through, so if you're looking for a particular game, you might want to do a quick search for it. Click search at the top of the page, choose the cheats form, and enter the game name in the keyword section. I was hoping to find some for Bonk's Adventure, but nothing came up, so let's try for Kato-chan and Kinjan. The result is a thread with codes for many games that start with the letter K, and our game has two codes listed. To enter our first code, I recommend doing this directly on the EverDrive itself. I'll show you why shortly. Select the game, in this case Kato-chan and Kenchan, and press button 1. Choose Cheats, and here you can enter your code. Press button 1 and you'll enter the code editor. Button 1 will also enter the selected hexadecimal value. Once you've entered all the values, you can give the code a name. When you're done, press button 2. Pressing left or right will toggle the code on or off. Now you can start your game and the code entered should be active. The other way to edit codes is through a text editor on your computer. Open up the SD card and inside ED Data Game Data, select the folder for the game you added a code for and you'll see a new cheats.txt file. You can edit this with the standard text editor. The data is laid out in a slightly special way, which is why I suggest creating at least one code on the console so that you have this template to work from. Plus and minus at the front is used for toggling a code on or off. The rest should be pretty self-explanatory if you have a code entered as a reference.
Note the file only supports up to 16 cheats at a time per game. If you need more, you'll need to remove some codes. There you have it. I hope this guide explains in depth some of the features and helps you get your Turbo EverDrive Pro set up. Thank you for watching.